Okay, as I hinted in part one of the Gudgeons and Pintles video, um, I was a little unsure whether or not I was going to retain these uh, Gudgeons and Pintles from Davy and Company. Um, it's not the quality, they're very well made and, and they are very nice looking with the polished bronze. Uh, but the issue is that, uh, so these are half inch pins for the Pintles. Um, and they're made of bronze, um, and although bronze is more durable than stainless, uh, stainless is uh, a little bit stronger. And also, I think I want to go with something uh, quite a bit heavier, at least 5 eighths. Um, and the reason for that is really the rudder. I mean, this is a massive rudder. It's, it's more than 10 and a half feet long. And it's not just the weight, it's uh, the surface area. I, I mean, more than half of it is underwater and the amount of force that's applied to this rudder through wave action, um, you know, especially when being offshore and, or in bad conditions, um, I wanna be, I wanna make sure that I have the best possible setup. Um, so I also mentioned that I might use the, um, old rudder quadrant uh, for, from the pedestal and just kind of cut it and make a gudgeon out of it. Uh, also use the hardware and maybe even the rod if I cut it. Um, so I'll probably do that. Um, also I need to do some fairing here on the rudder uh, from where the quadrant was attached as well as the big hole that was left in the transom uh, from that quadrant. I've also cut up the shaft into perfect size pin for the gudgeon. And now I've shaped that gudgeon very, very heavy duty. Uh, sanded it down, polished it up a little bit. Uh, not that it matters, this is going to be underwater. Um, and as you can see, I had to sand down some of the gel coat, barrier coat, then gel coat, then fairing. Uh, but I got it to fit really nice. Um, drilled some holes for dry fitting. These still need to be uh, epoxied, over drilled and epoxied. Um, and then just fitted it so that if I ever did ground out and the rudder had to come off, there was room for that. And for the top gudgeon, I was able to acquire a couple of these uh, smaller ones. They're made of bronze. Uh, from someone who happened to have them on hand. Um, that one's all painted. I did get the paint off of this one. Uh, just sanded it a little bit. Um, of course, I had to sand back the gel coat to dry fit it. Um, and it's going to go with one of these original 5 8 uh, gudgeons. And I'll, I'll put the pin in there. So there's actually a little bushing in here, um, similar to this which comes out. So I could either use a half inch or, or the 5 8 I've got the rudder prepped for the installation of the gudgeons. So I've over drilled the holes, uh, filled them with epoxy, then drilled the proper size hole. Did some fairing here where I went aggressive on the sanding of the gel coat and then uh, some barrier coat. Uh, same thing here where the old uh, rudder quadrant was attached. I got this nice and smooth, ready for paint. Uh, and same thing here uh, for the top gudgeon that I'm adding. Um, uh, also went a little aggressive, uh, but uh, I'm going to just be painting this. And now touch it up with a little bit of paint. So now the gudgeons are mounted to the rudder. I did end up using stainless steel bolts and nuts, 316 stainless, which is a bit stronger. Um, so now the rudder is ready to be mounted uh, after I address the hole in the transom. I'm going to get started on closing those holes from where the, or the big hole from where the rudder quadrant was coming out. So there's wood core in there. Um, the hull here, the top, uh, the transom is more than an inch thick. So my first step is to uh, cut out um, some of the wood core to the, on the edges here and then 
put a big piece in there. Um, then I'll also have to taper some of the fiberglass on both sides so I can lay some over. I'm not going to do a huge taper here because uh, this is well above the water line and it's not going to be supporting anything. I've started by cutting back the fiberglass skin and digging out the plywood core which uh, thankfully was dry. I now did a little bit of a taper or a bevel to the inside skin. Also I've tapered the outside fiberglass skin. I've taken a half inch piece of plywood, um, impregnated it with epoxy, and I'm going to epoxy it in there with some thickened epoxy and then lay some glass over this here on the inside. I've now glassed it over. glassed over the exterior of the hull, sanded down to knock down any high spots. I fared and sanded and quick coat of unthickened epoxy. Insulation of the rudder will basically be the reverse of uh, taking it off. So I just tied off the rudder, rudder head to the push pit and propped up the bottom of the rudder here onto the trailer. Okay, so that was relatively simple. Um, I did remember to tape in the nylon washer here so it wouldn't fall out. Um, and now I will attach the transom gudgeons. I'll do the middle one first. I've now got it dry fitted and this did take quite a bit of work uh, to get it fitted properly because when you're adding a gudgeon, any, any more than two gudgeons and you're, you need to kind of make sure that that third one is in the same uh, axis as the first two. Um, so in this case, I ended up having to use a little bit of a shim here that I made at a G10 as well as two uh, nylon washers. Uh, and there's a washer in each of the other ones. Um, so this looks good. The rudder's working nicely. I just need to over drill up there to protect the wood core and then uh, seal it for leaks. And here on the inside, uh, of course, I painted with some bilge paint. You can see where I laid in some new fiberglass. For the very top gudgeon, I added, uh, well, this is actually an original backing block made of uh, high density polyethylene or starboard. Uh, and there's obviously wood core in there, so I'm wondering if that's even necessary. Uh, but for that middle gudgeon, uh, where there is no wood core, I did add this half-inch uh, G10 board backing block. Uh, it's pretty substantial. And of course, uh, sealed it with uh, 4200. And now for the final fitting, what I had decided to do was remove those nylon washers that I had put in there. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, twofold. So nylon does swell underwater, uh, which makes it less durable. Uh, but also because the nylon washer raises the, the rudder up a tiny bit, um, it increases the space between the rudder and the rudder shoe, uh, giving uh, more potential to get a, a line caught in there. Um, so the way I'm securing it is with a stainless washer and a split pin. And actually I would not have been able to get this in with the nylon washer because it increased the, increased the space there. So for the middle and top, I have that uh, piece of the stainless shaft from the quadrant that I had cut up earlier in the video. Uh, but I do intend to replace those with uh, a 5 8 bolt. This is a half inch, so it's too thin. 
Um, and what I'll do is just uh, cut the threads off and then drill a hole for a split pin. And I'll be done. And that concludes the rudder gudgeons modification.